Hi everyone! Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'm so glad you're here and I cannot wait to share with you what's new here at Bean Cozy Stitching. So grab a comfy chair, get your favorite beverage, and we'll head on into the workroom and I'll show you what's new. <music> week here at Being Cozy Stitching is it's laundry day. No, not really. Not really at all. But what we do have here are the makings and the beginnings of a memory quilt. And I thought this would be the perfect time of year to do this because a lot of people here in the Midwest when it gets cold and snowy and icky and you can't go outside and you start looking around your house and looking at everything and you start thinking, it's time to clean out some closets and finish some projects. And a lot of us have graduations coming up, high school, college. There are weddings, anniversaries, baby births, all kinds of really fun stuff coming up. And a really nice way to personalize the gifts that we give to people during these events is to make a memory you know, a memory quilt, a memory pillow, a memory bear. But what we're going to focus on today here is a memory quilt. And we're going to start that by using dress shirts. And I'm going to clear off this because we've got a whole pile to get through here. And then I'm going to show you how to harvest the fabric from your dress shirt. You're going to find there's a lot of fabric here, a lot. And don't discount some of these secondhand stores when you're wandering around because for a quarter, you can get almost a yard of fabric and it's nice stuff. It's different than the quilting cotton and it's different than you know your joanne cottons your walmart cottons it, it is different and it does behave a little differently but it makes beautiful beautiful items i have made rag rugs out of them i have made quilts out of them there's all kinds of things that you can do with them so let me clear off the counter here so you can see what we're doing and then i'll show you how to harvest your fabric from a dress shirt okay so what I suggest is that you have a catch-all basket because that's where we put all of the pieces and parts that we want to save because we think maybe we want to use it later and then what I like to do is I like to start on the sleeve and I cut the cuff off just just at the stitching line at the bottom because I want to save the cuff. I'd like to keep the cuff intact and it's all sewn together. So it's kind of a nice little, I don't know yet, but I think I might have an idea for this. And if it turns out good, we've got an upcoming video. If it doesn't, I can just throw it away. I don't have to keep it in my basket. So I will go ahead and I will cut off both of the cuffs and throw those in my little catch-all basket. I cut all of the buttons off first and I kind of skipped that because I already did that without having it filmed, sorry. But I go ahead and I cut off all the buttons and I put those into a container. And as you can see, I mean, look at all the buttons I got. And I do have a project in mind for these. So that'll be another upcoming video. I will show you what I do with these lovely, luscious little buttons. So then I'm going to put that in there. Then once I have that taken care of, then I come up to the collar. And I cut it off just below that row of stitching because there's a row of top stitching on these shirts and I cut the collar off. Now, if you're working with a polo shirt, I save the ribbing because it can be used on other clothing projects. Um, it can be sewn into just a bunch of other stuff. So I do save the ribbing. These collars, 
I have yet to find a use for them. I don't know what to do with them. If any of you have any ideas, I would love to hear what you do with them. Please put some comments in the bottom. Send me some pictures on our Facebook page. Um, yeah, I would love to know what you do with them because for me, I just throw them away because I don't know what to do with them. Then the next thing I do is I come in and I flatten the sleeve just like you would if you were going to iron a shirt. And there is a row of top stitching right along the sleeve right in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to follow that line. And I'm going to cut the sleeves off. And set that over there. Then I'll come in and I'll take the other side. Again, I'm just going to flatten it out. I get so excited when I see these. Now, I don't have a project in mind, so I don't really know what I'm going to do with these yet. I thought I wanted to make one thing and decided I'm not quite sure that's the direction I want to go based on the shirts that I've selected. So I will have to let you know in an upcoming video what I do with that. So now take your sleeve and you can see this underarm seam. You're just going to want to cut next to the top stitching and cut that apart. And it takes just a little bit. And you're going to come all the way up to the top. Don't worry if you don't have it exact because, let's face it, it's a shirt. And it was inexpensive to use. But look at all that lovely fabric that you get. That's almost like getting a fat quarter out of a sleeve. Now, I will tell you, I did mention earlier that you could get about a yard of fabric out of a shirt. Let me clarify that because I don't want any comments down below. If you're a size two, there's no way you're going to get a yard of fabric out of a shirt if you cut it apart. So size does matter. <laughs> and the bigger the shirt, the more fabric you're going to get. So I'm talking about a large or larger shirt, you'll get about a yard of fabric out of that. Anything smaller than that, you're not quite going to get a yard out of it. But like I said, it's going to depend upon the size of your shirt. But either way, there's a lot of fabric that you can get out of these to use. And two sleeves, that's like getting two fat quarters. Then I come in and I open up my shirt and I cut along the top shoulder and I cut just at where that top stitching is because not because you have to I mean you could cut it anywhere you wanted to but this gives me about the most fabric back and let's face it there's a top stitching line there so it's really easy to follow I don't have to think about it I can sit down and watch TV and I can cut apart a couple dozen of these in no time so now I've got this one big piece of fabric all opened up and I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to go to the side seam. I don't know if you can see this is where the sleeve used to be. But then I come into the side seam again. I follow that top stitching line and I cut that apart. And then I have this other lovely piece of fabric to use. Maybe a quarter of a yard sitting here. Because the front, the front panels, they really aren't, they aren't going to give you the most fabric back, especially if there is a monogram or design or something that you're using as a focal point. You're going to have to cut around that and then that gets placed in the center of whatever design that you're choosing. And I will be cutting mine out of right here so I'm gonna lose a good portion of this fabric so don't count on the two front pieces as giving you the most possible fabric back what's gonna give you the most fabric is gonna be the back and then the last thing you need to do you need to cut across what they call the yoke and again just follow that top stitching line you don't have to be exact if you're off a little bit so what? You'll straighten it up when you get ready to cut your project out. The yoke, I throw it away. I don't know what to do with it. I don't have a use for it. So at that point, 
Again, if you guys have any ideas, please let me know what you do with them. Now, I just cut out the pleat because the pleat is just two pieces of fabric folded together. And if you cut the pleat, you open it up, there's all kinds of fabric underneath there. And look at that lovely piece of fabric. We are talking 24 24, 25 inches of fabric here. And this is a large shirt. So again, depending on the size of your shirt, you'll either have more or less, depending on what you've got available to use. But think about that, 24 inches of fabric just in the back alone. That would make a lot of squares, pieces, parts, whatever you're gonna do with them. You can do strips, two and a half inch strips. And to do that, you just fold it in half, and you take your rotary cutter and you cut away the parts that don't make sense and you cut it just like you would fabric. So you're gonna square up the edge as if this is just regular fabric. So go ahead and treat this like you would any other fabric. Square it up, get it ready, cut it out. Whatever your pattern is gonna call for, that's how you're gonna cut your pattern, your pieces. Because remember, this is just a piece of fabric like any other piece of fabric now. So now you can cut it just like your pattern says. If you need two and a half inch strips, you're gonna cut them. If you need five inch strips, you're gonna cut them. If you need 10 inch strips, you're gonna cut them. If you need 10 inch squares, you're gonna cut them. So, like I said, just go ahead and use this like you would any other fabric. Now I have, let's come over here so that you can see, I've gone ahead and cut apart my pile and this is what I'm left with. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, so the challenge here now is I have 20 shirts that I'm going to go ahead and use to make my pattern. I don't have a pattern yet. I don't have an idea. I was more interested in har harvesting the fabric so I could see how much fabric that I'm working with because I'm going to use all of the shirts as the fabric in the project. I'm not going to add fabric to it. I'm going to use what I have here. And I will go ahead and show you what I finally decided on making and the finished product in an upcoming video so you can see just exactly what can you get out of 20 shirts. So I'm excited for you to try this. Go harvest some shirts, um, see what you can come up with, post pictures, um, hashtag a memory quilts on Instagram. I cannot wait to see them. Hashtag them being cozy stitching. I can't wait to see what you come up with and I can't wait to show you what I come up with. So good luck harvesting your fabric and I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming. Bye.